Most of us have limited space for our gardens. I mean, we're not farmers and have acres and acres. So we want to use that space the best we can. And one of the ways to do that is to think vertical. That's right. Grow things with supports vertically. Hey, resilient citizens, this is Prepper Popery sweating, as you can see, because it's going to rain today, but it hasn't gotten here yet. So it's just, ugh, terrible, terrible, like thick air almost. But I wanted to share with you a gardening video and I hope you hit that subscribe button if you already haven't and hit the bell icon so you receive notifications on all future videos. There are a number of advantages. One of them, according to a Cornell study, is that you will actually have a greater quantity of produce doing that. It said pole beans yield two to three times the harvest of bush beans when grown in the same spot. It can also limit disease because there's more air going around and the stuff isn't laying on the ground, right? So that's a good advantage. And harvesting can be a lot easier, right? You're just picking right here from the vine. I mean, how easy is that? And you don't have to worry about, you know, soil, sand, grit, getting on the produce that you're harvesting because growing vertical it's getting a rain bath quite often so it doesn't have any of that soil on it as an added benefit you can add curb appeal to your garden or even a hideout for young kids such as this bean tent shown on boardpanda.com made from a simple bamboo teepee this and at the top there you put strings put the bottom into the ground and you can have beans or various things growing up this teepee it works really good and if you don't have bamboo you can use straight twigs from the woods very economical for vertical growing i've also seen gardens where twigs are used to give pea plant support like this one from lawntofood.com again easy and doesn't cost anything to implement now i want to acquaint you with the different supports I have in my garden. My favorite is these vertical supports here. You can see the one behind me and this one made from cattle panels. It's really easy to do and they are extremely sturdy and they're galvanized so they won't rust. I mean, just look at the squash I'm growing on them right now. And at this side, can you see all the way at the top? That is my toughy acorn like squash and that vine is going crazy I have there it's also going all over but a great great veggie to grow up your trellis and you can see we have more blossoms so soon we'll have some more squash starting I love acorn squash in the fall and the winter if you notice the top of this trellis it isn't exactly nicely rounded <laughs> blame my husband on that he did that so he could fit it in the back of his truck um, he said oh it will regain its shape well it hasn't in over a year but when he picked up the other one it's right through there can you see it it's got a perfect arch because they rolled it and put on a carabiner so it easily fit in the back of his truck so do that if you're doing this <laughs> otherwise you might end up with not as pretty of an arch so here's the very top of my arch. It is a, well, I am five foot tall. Let me show you a minute. When I said you could easily, easily pick, for me, oh, there we go. I can get it, but it's almost out of my range. See, I don't want to do that. I didn't want to ruin that because that had two more. So basically my husband has to help me. So you might want to consider your height. Does it work for you? Okay, I also love these tomato cages. These are Texas tomato cages, and they are a great, great support. Just look at all those tomatoes I'm getting. Love these because they're collapsible, and you can use them again and again, and they never rust. I also have two of these. They're just about five-foot trellises and they're made from galvanized pipe and fittings so the trellis won't rust that's what i was told but you can see that is rusting a bit but anyway then i just put up a plastic mesh 
Right now, I'm not growing anything, but often I grow melons on these. So my entire back of my garden has the galvanized pipes, and they're at about six feet. And I have, in some areas, plastic mesh, in some areas, twine. Right there where those purple beans are, I have to replace it. The twine is really torn, so I'm going to have to do some refurbishing. But this works fantastic. And the other thing you can do is grow something that's tall, like your corn, or in this case, this are sunchokes. And you can have something wrap around, like beans, uh, wrap around the actual stem of your other plant. You know, think of like the Three Sisters Gardens. That can work well. You might be wondering, but what can you grow vertically? Well, the first that comes to mind is pole beans, and then you have peas, cucumbers, melons, and squash. I mean, there's really a lot that you can, and it really frees up the ground for other plantings. Now, the thing is, to find the seeds, however, you have to be careful. You don't want anything that says bush or semi-bush. You are looking for vining vegetables. And catalogs don't always make this easy. Park Seed actually has a filter category called Climbing Vegetable Varieties, which is great. Johnny's may list vining in the description, but it often doesn't give specifics of how tall a vine to expect. And likewise, Baker Creek may mention vining in the description. Burpee doesn't have an easy way to find vining vegetables, but it does list the mature spread, which gives you the idea of a possible height. My favorite pole bean is what I call yellow ribbon beans. They have a 66 day maturity rate, they're non-hybrid, and they are so tasty. But there are a lot of different beans that you can grow, even shelling beans, even lima beans. So check out what is best for where you live. Well, we love pea pods. And this year we grew Johnny's sugar pea pods and we had a great harvest. So nice having them grow vertically and not taking up so much room and having problems trying to find them when you're picking them in the bush varieties. And I already showed you my toughy squash. That acorn squash is doing fantastic. Before I have grown a summer squash on the back trellis, uh, tromboncino, I think it is, and it's kind of a long curved one. That works really, really well too. And I've had moderate success growing uh, small melons, you know, such as sugar baby, watermelons, or tiger musk melons. But again, our growing season sometimes is shorter than I like, and if I start something for seed, it might not have time to reach maturity. But Melons are definitely a possibility. And of course, there's a lot of different vining cucumbers. Since I'm the only one that eats cucumbers in the family, I don't usually grow them. But check your garden catalogs. You can find a lot of vining ones. And of course, for tomatoes, you're looking for indeterminate tomatoes, the ones that grow really high. That is the best for vertical growing instead of the more bush variety of tomatoes. Now, in the case of melons, it might get a little heavy and you might have to put a little sling or support for the fruit itself. Uh, a lot of people say you don't because the heft makes the stem thicker and so it's fine. But it depends on how windy uh, your area is and it's up to you if you want to add support or not. So next year, when you're planning your garden, think vertical. You'll be glad you did. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and share the knowledge.